Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Swill and Grog's Wonderful World of Beer. Tonight, we'll be looking at this brew, Menabry 1846. 4.8% alcohol by volume, brewed and bottled by Bira Menabry in Italy. Now, um, by the look of things, this is an adjunct lager because uh, I had a look at the ingredients on the back here and I do see that it contains maize, otherwise known as uh, corn. All right, so I've never tried this before. I uh, actually must thank my uh, good mate and uh, work colleague, Greg, for uh, giving me this brew to review. So uh, thank you very much, Greg. Anyway, I think it's time to get uh, stuck into this, so I'll... Uh, yeah, pop off the cap. There was some nice smoke there. And I'll uh, pour it into this Pilsner glass and make an assessment of it. All right. It's looking very uh, effervescent, I must say. All right. Oh, got a nice uh, frothy, uh, frothy head there too. All right. So, um... <clears throat> How does the appearance go? Well, the appearance, uh, well, aside from being very uh, effervescent, is um, what I would describe as a very um, clear, light uh, golden color. You've got uh, about bang on two fingers. Well, it was when I poured it a little over two fingers of, uh, you know, bright white frothy head there. So uh, it does look, uh, you know, very enticing, I must say. Let me just top this up. Didn't want to spill it before. It was really, uh, you know, frothing up, uh, yeah, a little bit too much uh, when I poured it. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, quite a uh, nice appearance. But, um, yeah, perhaps what I would have expected for its style. But uh, anyhow, so far, so good. Now, uh, for the aroma. All right, so... Uh, Picking up a faint uh, smell of grains there. And, uh, yeah, a bit of grass as well. Perhaps a bit of, uh, perhaps a bit of citrus. Hmm. All right, well, um, anyway, we've talked about the um, appearance and we've talked about the aroma. So, um, yeah, that could uh, only mean it's time to get on with the taste test, the most important part of the review. So, uh, cheers to you, the audience. And an even bigger cheers to you, Greg. Thank you for, uh, yeah, supplying me with this uh, brew. Hopefully, it's um, really good. <laughs> but I'm about to find out. <laughs> hmm. All right, well, um, let's get a somewhat... Um, interesting taste about it um yeah it's hard to say yeah just off the top of my head what it actually reminds me of it's typical of you know your um common you know uh you know euro pale lagers that are out there although again i'm a little bit stumped as to what i could uh you know compare it to but um you know up front you know, you've got, um, you know, some, uh, you know, subtle sort of sweet grains there. You know, a nice, pleasant, you know, maltiness, not overly sweet. Uh, in the finish, there's a, a nice little hot bite. But, you know, as far as hot presence goes, it's, uh, you know, very minimal. Uh, you know, it's not, you know, very bitter at all. You could uh, go as far as saying. But, you know, again, what I would expect from this style, there is probably... A residual sort of hop taste but you know it, it is you know very faint but yeah uh, I could probably best describe it as sort of a, a sort of leafy sort of hop taste but yeah again that's very sort of typical of your Euro Pale Lager but uh, yeah I think there's nothing really you know offensive about it uh, flavor wise um, yeah, my first impression is, yeah, it's not too bad. So I must have another gulp. Mm. 
Mm. All right, well, it's, um, you know, it's certainly holding that taste profile. Yeah, I mean, um, as far as the body goes, you know, it's, um, you know, somewhere between light and medium bodied. It's certainly not watery uh, in any way. You know, it's got a very, you know, you know, clean, crisp sort of taste about it. You know, the finish, you know, is probably semi-dry, you could say. But uh, all up, a pretty good, uh, you know, Euro Pale Lager um, with, you know, obviously a corn adjunct in it. But I'm really not, um, you know, picking that corn up at all. Anyhow, um... Yeah, as far as the price point goes, I think uh, it's uh, not too bad, uh, you know, even, um, you know, here in Australia. Um, yeah, not too bad at all. In fact, uh, I think uh, Greg uh, showed me um, what the price was, you know, for the sake of, uh, you know, my review. And uh, yeah, I remember it pre being pretty good, although I'm not, um, I'm not certain what you pay for a carton of it. But I'd, I'd say that it'd be, you know, pretty reasonable. Anyway, um, time to wrap this up, I think. We're uh, nearly, uh, yeah, well, approaching the seven-minute mark, believe it or not. So uh, I'll have one last gulp and uh, give this a score and a 10. Ah. All right, well, yeah, all in all. A pretty decent uh, lager from uh, Italy. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, nothing mind-blowing, but it definitely satisfies. Um, I failed to mention before that, um, yeah, it's definitely very drinkable and, uh, you know, very sessionable. Uh, you know, a carton of this wouldn't last long, you know, at a party uh, on a summer's day. So, uh, yeah. Um, I think that really says something for it. So, uh, you know, if you do, um, you know, come, uh, well, if you do, you know, uh, come upon this uh, particular brew, um, and I do believe it's, you know, widely available uh, here in Australia, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, check it out. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Anyway, in terms of a score out of 10, uh, I'd be um, inclined to give it a... 8 out of 10. I think it's a, a solid 8 out of 10, this one. All right, well, um, thanks for joining me once again for another episode of Swill and Grog's A Wonderful World of Beer. And uh, till next time, folks, fare thee well, all.